Alrighty. Challenging Thalassocracy. Challenging the Malay Castle Age unique tech. It gets harbors. With the alliance made and the pieces on the board, conflict was inevitable. The Tambralingas themselves posed only a token threat, but they had the support of the immense naval empire of Srivijaya. The prowess of the Srivijaya navy was unmatched, but their coalition was at a strategic disadvantage. The Kamai forces threatened the enemy by land from the north and by sea from the east, while the Chola struck out from the west. The enemy found themselves surrounded on all sides. Suryavarman sent word to the Chola force to establish a foothold on the Malay Peninsula. Taking the initiative, he ordered the outfitting of a massive navy to challenge the Srivijayans and Tambralingas for maritime supremacy. Everything hinged on the success of the Chola force that had landed on the mainland. If they could present a formidable enough threat and occupy the enemy land forces, Soya Varman would be able to wrest control of the water and launch a devastating amphibious invasion. If the Cholas were driven from their foothold, the Khmer would be forced to face down their opponents alone. A prospect that Soya Varman preferred not to contemplate. Time for some water. Splishy splash fun times. Defeat the Tamberlingas and Shrivijaya. Do not allow your Chola allies to be defeated. Uh, we can reach Imp. So that's all nice. Um, we can't make gunpowder except for cannon galleons. So there's some Tamberlinga bases on, you know, our, our territory. So we're going to get rid of those first. Let's see, we have a huge army to start. Conquering Central Islands will give you access to numeral, numerous mineral resources. Stay apprised of events occurring across the sea without aid. The Chola Fortress will not hold out forever. I don't find this to be true. In my experience, the Chola are uh, kick ass. <laughs> the Khmer army is stationed in the southern coastal portion of the Khmer Empire, preparing for the impending conflict in the Gulf of Thailand. Um, so, yep. There are some... Uh, so a few land-based threats, but mostly it's going to be on the water. The Cholas are, you know, they have the foothold over in the Malay Peninsula, so we have to help them out, and they'll make various Indian units. Uh, the Tamberlingas are mostly over here and over here. And Srivijaya is to the south. Both enemies are Malay. Again, starting with like one of every unit. Uh, why, 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 why? Whoa, whoa, whoa! I don't remember this one. Um. Um. I don't remember them attacking you within a minute. Anybody else gather our forces here? Oh yeah, so we're also going to want to build TC over here. I mean, like I said, we have a pop limit of 200, so... Might as well. We also have a random force here in the north with a monk with a relic. Because, once again, this map has a ton of relics for some reason. I don't remember them attacking you that fast, though. Holy crap, man. There's another relic. I think there's, like, another four relics on this map. I mean, I guess we're just going to get our asses kicked right now on water. Wait, do we have a university? No, we don't. We're going to need to get some uh, some good old-fashioned heated shot. Yeah. 
Anyway, here is a Tamberlinga Fortress. Hopefully they're sending their army down that way, so my smaller army here can make something happen. <laughs> One damage! Yeah, I'm gonna need a good shot. Anyway, here are our allies. You can see they have a pretty dying strong base. Get a university and heated shot. And then make some more towers or something. Because clearly we need that. Why is this not working out at all? Like, I've never had this many problems with this scenario, like, right off the bat. food, please. Well, this was a disaster. I literally, like, usually my starting army is enough to just wipe these guys out. Evidently not the case. Get a tower up on this hill. Might need to get up another tower over here as well. something. Get another tower over there. Let's replace our market. Yeah, Hidocha is the difference between 1 and 14 damage dealt by these towers. I guess I never sent these ships into battle. It's fine, though. We're fine. Unfortunately, the scenario used to be, I guess, easier is, is technically the right word, but I don't know. Less annoying because Khmer used to have shipwright, and now they don't. And shipwright's super important for Imperial Age water. Still, though, getting our economy up and rolling. We still have a decent amount of defenses here. Obviously, the towers help us in all sorts of ways. We only have one stable. Need a couple more than that. Check in every now and then. 
You know the troll are doing fine. All, all the enemies have infinite resources, in case you didn't know. Or were wondering, or whatever. We are only on three TCs. Could probably go up to a fourth. Perfect. Don't need to go too overboard on the farms because we're mostly going to be fighting on the water. But still, uh, we are going to need to make a land for us eventually. That was weird. I wonder if the the Shri Vijay was supposed to attack you that fast. Because that was like minute one. <laughs> and it takes you like a minute to even just get yourself situated when you start with this huge freaking base. And, you know, just get up to a good count of villagers. Uh, we could have gone for a fish boom, but because we're so much worse than our opponents on the water, there's no real benefit of it, because it's very easy to just lose all your ships. The Chola aren't doing... Did they make this scenario harder? I remember. <laughs> just even on DE, like, I've done this scenario on DE on hard. So the Chola don't look to be in that great spot. I don't know. Regardless, let's get that relic. That is something everyone can agree on. And by everyone, I mean me. Agreeing with me. So yeah, obviously, priority number one. Get these tamberlings off our land. Poplin's 200, right? Yeah. As usual, focusing down the production buildings. Because that's very fun, apparently. Oops. Don't need that many more villagers. I guess I always overestimate how many villagers I need because I'm used to, you know, playing multiplayer. 
where you don't get to take such uh, luxurious and efficient trades. Whoa, hey. Okay, at least this base is destroyed. Oh, that, that be stone miners. Get some more galleons, or war galleys, I guess. We'll risk taking our monk back. Oh yeah, click up to him. Let's bring these guys up here, take out the docks. Then we should be good. Yeah, let's get some more docks. Late game water meta. Uh, you might think like, oh man, rip galleys, galleons, it's all about the, the fire ship now. That's sort of true in early game water, but... As the game develops, you still want to go for, uh, mostly galleons. What is- what is going on? I don't even know if we're winning this. It doesn't really look like it. I did forget to research Bodkinera, which is a pretty good upgrade. Trade cogs, lol. Alright, perfect. We got rid of all of the Tamberlinga crap on our land. Yeah, these guys are definitely having a harder time than normal. Whoa, wait, they're getting cannon galleons? Damn! Yeah, they really stepped up the difficulty on this scenario. Yeah, I have zero memories of this scenario being so hard on HD or DE. I mean, I think we're still fine, but surprising, I guess. Yeah. I guess, sorry, Tamberlinga. Or not Tamberlingas, they're the bad guys. Cholas? Speaking of the Cholas, actually. I wish that, uh, instead of, you know, so, some of the other later civs that were added, like Portuguese or one of Cumans or Tartars, I think you can add one and not the other and be fine with it. Um,. I think it would be cool to have a southern Indian Civ. Like, you can just call them, like, Dravidians or whatever. And that would include stuff like the Chola. Because it doesn't make sense for <laughs> a southern Indian Empire to have everything based off of the Mughals. Cannon Khmer do have an uh, elite Cannon which is nice. They only miss Heavy Demo Ship and Shipwright. And they used to have Shipwright. Um, let me get a couple more monks. Ah, yeah, screw it. I believe. Oh, 
Leak Cannon Galleon. So let's get Fast Fire Trip as well. Let's get a few of them. Oh yeah, I forgot to get this guy. Masonry! Also, in case you guys didn't know, because this one is a, a very common misconception, even among experts for some reason. Um, siege Engineers does not affect Cannon Galleons. I know Cannon Galleons are siege ships, but uh, it's, not how, it's not how they work. <laughs> Otherwise, you would see your Cannon Galleons have either 14 or 16 range as opposed to 13 or 15. I am very short on wood. Remember when I said I shouldn't go overboard on the farms? I went overboard on the farms. Thankfully, I never listened to myself. Anyway, things seem to be going up much more smoothly now. We still have plenty of ships. The Cholos are doing fine. Not exactly thriving. And our navy is pretty kick-ass. And eventually we'll just land a huge amount of uh, villagers and all the remaining elephants we have and, you know, build some castles and stables and stuff over on their island. Well, not island, it's the Malay Peninsula, but you get the idea. For the purposes of this map, it's an island. <laughs> What do you guys think of the new uh, cannon galleon sound, or just gunpowder sound in general? To me, it, it sounds more realistic, but less awesome than an AOC. <laughs> but some people really like it, some people don't like it. Anyway, securing these islands is quite nice. Losing all my cannon galleons for free over there, less nice. But uh, it's Ormly, what do you expect? Trying to see if I had another transport trip. Right, that's that problem solved. Oh yeah, I can do that. Oh, also another random fun fact. Conscription does not affect docks. It only affects barracks, uh, stable, archery range, and castle. So it doesn't even affect siege workshops. These guys are still holding up. Oh, okay. Th this is the Chola I know and love. Kicking ass with some uh, taking down the Tamberlingas. I don't know why I brought four monks to collect two relics, but, you know, they're old. They need some help. Malay also don't get a uh, heavy demo ship, which is quite nice. Actually, it makes fast fire ships an even more attractive option. Yeah, let's grab these 12 villagers, shall we? No. 
I don't know why everyone else uh, also had to get out, but you know. It's all about community with monks. Once we clear a path, we'll, uh, you know, start dropping castles and such. Didn't I order another transport ship? Oh, where's my ship right, man? You don't get champions as Malay, that's not a thing. Also send over these guys. Whoa, 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 whoa. Now we have a, can establish a bit of a beachhead. Are these guys gold miners? Are there any gold mines left? Not really. You guys can come in the next boat. Grab a couple castles, you know. Just campaign things. Okay, there's one dock down. As usual, it's all about sniping production buildings. I actually don't have any siege workshops. I'd like to get some siege rams. Okay, I think they're out of docks, which is nice. Oh yeah, these ships have probably uh, not been very useful for a long time. Oh yeah, never brought these monks back to. I'm such a genius. No, they do have one more dock. Curses. Start tripping that down. Get another castle. Another one. Oh, I never got Siege Engineers, did I? Nope, didn't even get any of these guys. Alright, so this is pretty much going swimmingly. Retriever Jai is pretty much donezos. Now we can move on to finish off uh, the Terran Berlinga. I guess they're Dunzos on the water. They still have this little fortress here we need to take down. Oh! Open the floodgates for the elephants, man. Uh, 
Um, can we can, can we get going? Thankfully, melee defenses are, other than harbors, pretty bad. I guess they have bombard towers, but they don't have fortified walls, they don't have architecture, they don't have boardings, that sort of thing. I guess they have keeps, but these guys don't have them upgraded. They don't have arrow slits. They do, however, have heated shots, so you got to be careful for that on water maps. Chola's not really doing a whole lot right now, but that's okay. You can do you can do the cleanup. Guess I didn't technically finish off these guys. Awesome. Yeah, definitely a lot harder than I remember, but still like you know, once we got to a certain point when we had our economy and uh, our production up and running. It was pretty easy. Yeah, I, like... I don't know why these villagers are, like, mining resources or, like, farming and stuff. Like, they literally have infinite resources. You can you can see it by the score. <laughs> like, no way, like, those guys are, were on, like, you know, 100 plus villagers like I am. Yeah. Just have to take out this one last base. And we should be good to go. Yep, we're still winning. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I guess we have a ton of idols, but I don't really care. Once we get these two buildings down, I think we should be good. You know, pretty much have the entire map explored too. There we go. They're actually stronger than Street Vijaya, just saying. I don't even think we need to look at the map. Storms raged as wooden vessels rammed into 
deafening sound prefaced by the whistling of projectiles through the air. Thousands of men sank below the angry waves, never to rise again. The Chola Land Force fought bravely, holding to the last. Just as it seemed that they were to be defeated by the Tandralinga Srivijaya Force, salvation arrived in the form of swarms of Khmer. Victory has a glorious taste. Over the course of a single conflict, the influence and power of the Empire were raised to unprecedented levels. Huzzah! Actually, the Chola, they, they, I guess, did work. Killed so many units. I guess they just didn't really, like, destroy any buildings or whatever. So, yeah, like, they did gather resources, but no way in hell that their economy scores would be, like, you know, so much higher than mine. And I was, you know, I gathered way more than them. Kind of just weird. Anyway, that was challenging a thalassocracy. And uh, finally, for our elephant adventure, we'll have Nirvana Pada. See you guys then.